G'day everyone, how's it going? Um, I'm Simon. I'm here to talk to you about the talk you should have had before you wrote your calls for the conference about how you can do your calls and your um, online streams and your conference talks better using Open Broadcast Studio and Jack. First slide, so this is what we're going to cover. We're going to have a quick about me. Uh, then I'm going to look at Open Broadcast Studio. Then I'm going to cover a sane way to configure Jack because there's lots of non sane ways. And finally, we might have a bit of fun. So, quick about me. I've used Linux since 2002, OpenSUSE since 2011. I've worked for SUSE for a few years after contributing to OpenSUSE. I'm in my fourth year in the board, um, but also kind of relevant to this talk. I have a significant history working with live audio, and I've done a bit of video switching stuff as well. But audio is what I'm more passionate about. So I'm going to start with some dis disclaimers. Firstly, I won't be covering Pipewire. Um, most of what I've worked on for this talk I've done over the last couple of hack weeks that Caesar's had. So thanks to them for letting me work on it. Um, but Pipewire wasn't ready then. It's probably slightly more ready now, but I need another hack week to play with it. Um, the second massive disclaimer is this whole talk is a live demo of the things that I'm talking about. I've already had some minor issues. I might have more. Everything might break. I might have to come back and re-record this tomorrow. Who knows? Um, but it'll be fun. There are some things I didn't get to set up because of my issues this afternoon, which means maybe you'll learn more. Um, the next disclaimer is... The approach I'm taking can be CPU intensive. So if you're trying to stream video games and stuff like that, this may not work for you. You may need more hardware, but this generally works fine for calls. Um, and the final disclaimer is I don't generally do my audio production on Linux. So there's lots of things I don't know. But there is a workshop tomorrow afternoon, I think, on it. And so go check that out if you're more interested. So on to Open Broadcaster software, which is often called OBS Studio. It's not the OBS build system we use. Um, it's software for video recording and streaming. It's letting me do things like show these slides with my face in the corner or switch to a bigger picture of me or show a spaceship if you don't want to see my ca if I don't want you to see my camera um, and I can click the wrong button and I'll probably do that again before the end of the talk and I can click the wrong button again and you can see two cameras so. Go back to my slides for a second. Where am I going next? So the way this bit of magic is useful for, um, for doing conference calls and talks and stuff like that is using B4L to loop back. You can create a virtual webcam and then I can go to Jitsi and tell um, it to use my virtual webcam, the same with Teams, I've done it all the time with them. Um, finally, on this slide I've put some notes about things I had to do at one point. I think some of this is in OpenSUSE Tumbleweed. I probably did it manually when I did it. Um, 
obviously OBS Studio is also great for recording or streaming. Um, uh, now we're back on to using OBS Studio, so now is when we get to see a bit of a live demo. So that's changed slides. Now what you can see is my control window zooming into infinity. I think somewhere, here we go. So here I have a webcam thing, image, it's this camera image. I have a jack, we'll get onto that later. I only just discovered you need that in each of them for it to work. And on this instance, I'm also sharing my whole screen. So I could move that around. I can move my camera around. You can see it's hiding the kind of recursive windows. That's the main reason why it's there. Um, I can add things. There's a bunch of things. There's text. There's more cameras. We can have as I did before, we can have two cameras because my laptop has a webcam as well. So now you can see me twice. You can add fun pictures and graphics. That's how I'm doing my borders. So if we just insert an image. I make that so you can see it. I'm just going to pick the border image. I hope that's the one I want. And so there we go. We've got that. I'll get rid of it as well. Um, I'm going to go back to my slides now. So while I'm here, this is also how I'm doing my slides. My slide screen is sharing the whole desktop, but with my face in the corner. If I come back here, you can see one of the nice things about the Enlightenment desktop is it lets me change windows wherever I want. I think I might have accidentally killed the slide. Just bear with me while I restart this slideshow. This is the joys of live demos. So here you can see another one of the layouts I'm using. In this layout, I've got a bigger border, so I've cropped it left and right. I often have a messy desk, and so if I'm in a call, I want to hide lots of it, and that's the easy way of doing that. I still have a messy desk because I didn't get time to clean up. Then here's another one. You can notice in this one, there's this red border. That means I'm not using the full camera. And again, I've selected the bit I wanted. Um, so I'm going to talk quickly about creating it. the overlays. They're basically just fancy images. So if I come over here to GIMP, you can see this one, I just copied my title slide out of LibreOffice Impress, I made it full screen, I printed the screen, and there wasn't too much to that one. This one, I think I took that title slide and made it into a border. This middle area is transparent so that if I put this border on top of the camera, it'll crop off the edges. And you can also add fun things, so I regularly have talks or meetings with people from Fedora. And they like to talk about Fedora a lot. So if they're talking about Fedora a lot, I can put my Fedora on. Which I'll show you in a second. So 
here we go. Now I've got a fedora on. You can do much more useful things like this than this, like putting in thumbs up or useful raising your hand symbols so people can see what you want to say something without talking. But you can also have fun. So where are we going next? Oh, um, I was having issues with the version of OBS in Tumbleweed that wasn't rendering properly. So here is a list of instructions that you don't need to read about how you can compile it and then run it. Um, I'll I mostly put this here so people can read it later. All right, so now we're coming on to the second part of the talk, which is configuring Jack using Cadence. Jack has quite a reputation for being hard to configure and hard to use, but really powerful if you know what you're doing. Um, Cadence, which is developed by one of the Linux distributions that focuses on live audio, uh, makes that much easier. And I thought that OpenSUSE should be as good at live audio as any other distro, so I've packaged it. So we're going to have a look at that. But first, there is a couple of things you need to do this well. The first one is an audio interface. An audio interface is basically a fancy sound card. Um, most sound cards are designed for playing your movies back in surround sound, whereas an audio interface is a sound card that's designed for doing real-time audio quickly. Um, if I swap cameras, this crazy box with a headphone stuck to it is the audio interface I'm using. It's a Steinberg something. It kind of works, mostly works in Linux because it has a class compatible mode, but it doesn't fully. I didn't buy it to work in Linux, but it does. Before you buy something, check the wiki for hardware support because that's important. The next thing is as you can see, I have a fanciest, mi fanciest ish microphone. The best thing you can do to get better quality sound, if you're doing calls often, is to get a nice microphone. Which you can either get a USB one, or many of them will need a audio interface. And on the type of microphone, over here, I have this cheap. I think this was. 20 euros on Amazon with this mic stand. The mic stand is readable, reasonable. The mic is rubbish. If you buy a, not all cheap mics are good. Um, the type of microphone is also important. So this microphone here is a very nice condenser microphone. In my opinion, it sounds better than the microphone I'm using, but because of its design, it picks up a large amount of background noise, which isn't always ideal if you're not in a quiet environment. And so I would recommend getting a mic one of these microphones, uh, a dynamic mic. Um, one of the joys of so many people doing podcasts these days is there are so many microphones out there that are advertised for podcasters. Any of them will work well for what you're trying to do. Now, to use Jack to its full abilities, one thing you have to do is configure real-time priority for audio. And so, firstly, you add yourself to the audio group. And then, secondly, you want to create this file with these things in it and then members of the audio group can run programs with real-time priority. One day I'll create an OpenSUSE package that just does 
that. And that will help everyone. Um, the next step is pretty simple. Install Cadence in Jack Mixer. So the way Jack works is vastly different to the way you we think about audio. It's more like if you have a audio studio or something. So you might have a an effect like this or as one application or you might have a mixing desk as another application and basically or you could have an instrument and basically Jack is allowing you to control how you connect all those applications. So if we come and have a look at Cadence quickly, here it is. So I'll get to this bit in a minute, but the first step is configuring Jack. So if I open that window, and then I send it away. There we are, I'll bring it back. Let's try that again. All right, so it gives you a bunch of settings. Um, the important ones are here in the driver. So here you can see I've configured my audio interface. Um, there's a bunch of other devices here. You could just use a normal sound card. Um, here you can specify if you go to duplex mode that you want a different input, an output device, that might be interesting if you're using, say, a USB microphone, you might use that as the input. And then some other cheap sound card, USB sound card to connect your headphones to. Um, sample rate is here. There is a bunch. 44100 is what most people bother dealing with. You can go above that. You probably won't notice a difference. I've configured a pretty big buffer here because this is for a talk. I don't care about having very small milliseconds of latency. So the smaller you make that buffer, the less latency you'll have, the more CPU you will use. That's important for, say, if you're trying to record audio and you really need that. Um, so those are the main settings. Cadence makes configuring that easy. The other thing it does well is it creates bridges. So I've configured to auto start a bridge to pulse audio, which means that I can send audio in and out of pulse if I need to. In a call, that's what I would normally do. Um, if we come back to wherever I left the slides and have a look at the next slide. So the next part of Cadence that is really useful is this tool, which lets you connect all your different applications together. So hardware here is my audio interface. For reasons, I have my microphone plugged into input 2. Um, ignore this bit for now, we'll come back to it. But then I have these two mixers. The top one is basically controlling whatever volume I want to send to my call or my stream or whatever. And so at the moment it's just a microphone, but if I'm bored and being dumb, I could send a drum kit or a guitar. We'll play with that later. Um, I also have Pulse here, but it's muted, so I could send audio from Pulse. I then have this second mixer here, and this second mixer is controlling what I hear. So you'll notice 
I have pulse muted in the top one because if you're talking to me in a call, I don't want to send your voice back to you. That's really annoying. So generally from pulse audio, I'm taking the call audio and sending it directly to my headphones along with my microphone so I can hear it's working. And so that's how I control the balance of those two things. But today we have a slightly different setup. So I have as well a extra record out and that's going to OBS Studio so that the video team can grab that and send that to you and that's how you're hearing your audio. Normally you would hear it up here through Pulse. Then I've got my headphones connected to one and two and I could drag things around and if I wanted whatever I have plugged into mic 4 to go straight through back to output 4 and just drag a line then I can disconnect it when I don't want it anymore the other thing that Jack can take care of is MIDI which we will play with perhaps a bit later or we would have my MIDI keyboard had showed up. Not sure what's going on there. But MIDI allows you to send control signals between programs. And so let's have a look. Now, this tool also lets you add new applications, run custom applications, and you can have different studios. So, for example, I've got one for this talk. Then I had the one I showed you before for normal conference calls. Um, the add new application, I'll show you it. It's not properly integrated with OpenSUSE. On my version of Cadence today, it's completely broken. It was kind of working. But you can theoretically automatically add your applications here. Some instruments. This is things I'll get to making sure they work later. Um, for now I've been, you can see I've got three applications here. I've run custom commands which if we were to come to the next slide The slide we're already at. So I'm launching two instances of Jack Mixer with different configuration files and CAF with its own set of saved set. And when Cadence is working correctly, you can press the go button and it will launch everything and configure everything directly. And then when you press the stop button, it will stop it all. One of the reasons that held me back from using Jack and a proper microphone in calls was the amount of time it took to set up and to connect all these things together every time. It was just painful and annoying, so I didn't do it often. I don't like leaving my audio interface on 24-7 with Jack running, so normally now that this saves my session state, I'll start my, I'll turn on my interface, I'll start my session, I'll do my call, I'll close it down, then I'll turn off my interface again until I need it. So now we're going to talk about some plugins. So here you saw this big mess. Basically, this is a bunch of effects, and we can use these effects to make our call sound better going to run you through a couple of the more important ones. Let's see, can I make this bigger? I can't make it bigger, so 
The first thing we're going to cover is a noise gate. Um, the gate and compressor in here, I don't think are the best, but if we open them, we can have a look at cool visuals and that makes it easy for me to explain. So basically a noise gate will cut all the audio if it's under a certain level. So if you have a bit of a noisy mic or something like that, when people aren't talking, you won't hear the noise. When you're not talking, people won't hear your noise. So you can see that as I talk, this ball comes up based off loudness. The important setting here is the threshold. So that controls when it kicks in. If you turn it up too high, my voice is going to cut out all the time. Like this, you can see that some words were triggering it, but not all of them. Um, if I bypass it, I can hear a tiny bit of noise, but not too much. This microphone's pretty good. But if I come to the compressor for a second, and I boost the input here. Sorry, that got really loud. But I won't, I won't talk, I'll just let you hear the noise. So you can then configure your noise gate to get rid of all that background hiss and noise. Um, can be quite effective if I click away from my microphone, you can't hear it. Hang on. You see, once I get past a, fit, a certain distance back, it's not turning on the mic, you're not hearing that noise. That's a pretty useful feature in calls. Um, Next thing I'm going to talk about that's an important tool is a compressor. So basically what a compressor does is it limits your really loud points and makes your quieter points louder. So you can see if this was the normal level, audio level, you can see that all my volume under a certain amount is boosted slightly, but then once you get really loud, I can even change that a bit, it's going to start squashing my signal. So if I get really loud into the microphone, then you're not going to hear shouting. And so if you're a gamer who gets excited or something like that, a compressor can be a really useful feature for you. The next thing I have that I don't have turned on at the moment is an equalizer. The other mic I was using has a lot of low end, so I was getting rid of it. And there was some other random weirdness here. Um, it's worth noting, equalizers can't add things that aren't there. But if your microphone's not perfect and makes some weird sounds, then you can fix some things. So if I turn it on, then it sounds a bit like this and I've got a bit of a thinner voice. Um, the next thing I have, which I didn't even properly set up for this microphone, so it's probably not working, is a de So So if I turn it off, some people have a lot of sound in their noise in the, as they speak. And some microphones pick that up, and it can be pretty bad. Mine's doing it a little bit. If I turn it off, if I turn it back on, that fixes it a bit. It's another useful tool to have. So, finally, I had a reverb. I was messing around with it. I don't normally use one that much for talking. I don't particularly like the sound of this one for much talking, but we can turn it on and I can make the room bigger and now I have an echo. 
So if we come back to, uh, here's my two mixes, you can kind of see my volumes. This orange thing up here means that at some point I was too loud. So I'm just going to clear that. And then all those different effects is what you see up here. So you can see I mainly use my microphone in mono. So for everything that has two, I'm only using the first one. But the microphone goes into the gate, then into the compressor, then into the equalizer, then the de-esser. I could drag these around so I could send the second reverb into the second gate if I wanted for some reason and stuff like that and that's how you set that up so again this is where cadence is a really helpful tool um, if we come back to my slides I think now we get to the fun time which I'm going to keep a bit shorter because as I said, I had some issues this afternoon and it's not quite organised. So, but on my desk, I have a MIDI keyboard. It was working all day, it's now not. So, we're not even going to bother playing with that. But what we can do is this is the mixer that controls what you guys hear. So, we're going to create a new input channel. I'm going to set its initial value to being off. Um, it's going to be in stereo. We don't want direct out and we're going to call this drums. And so now we have another channel. If we come back up here, you can see we have drums we can play with. And so now If I run Hydrogen, which is a drum machine, and I can add a kick drum, and snare, and let's have some hi hat. Uh, crash there's a simple drum loop and so that is actually playing don't know how that's playing oh so I can hear that you can't because it's connected it directly to it connected that directly to my playback, so sorry. I could hear that, you guys couldn't. We need to take the drum out and hook it up to the mixer. And now if I hit play, and now if we have a look at it, I can bring up the volume of the drums, which might be fun for you to, if you're a guitarist or something, and you want to jam with something, there's some basic drums that can be some fun. Now, we're going to add another channel to our mixer. We're going to call it gu guitar. This time, we're going to launch Guitarix, which is a virtual guitar amp. In my unpreparedness, I have barely touched this. I am also not a guitarist. I am a bass player, but I can try and show you something so we get the idea. So our guitar has spawned up here. This is where things can get really messy. I want to connect my guitar to the guitar channel then I want to get a guitar lead that I forgot. Sorry everyone, I'll be back in a sec. So 
So I now have my guitar lead. I'm going to plug that into channel one of the interface. I can then grab a guitar and plug that. Let's plug that in. So now I want to take my channel one signal and send it into the guitar amp. And then we have a look at the mixer. If I bring up guitar level, we have some noise. We can come and play around in guitar ics and echoey effects. Um, there's a bunch of stuff you can do here. It's not the best sounding guitar amp in the world, but you can see it's quite noisy. This is where a noise gate would be useful. Um, but that's enough playing with that for now. You didn't know it was there. Now you do. Um, I think that pretty much concludes everything I'm going to talk about for today.